If you want to learn how to use Open Sound Meter for tuning speaker systems, but you don't know where to start, then this video is for you. We're going to run through the basics of Open Sound Meter. We're going to connect up our microphone and our interface and check that it's all working correctly. I'll share how I recommend that you set up your transfer function measurements for measuring speakers. And we'll also take a look at storing the measurements and reading and interpreting the graphs. When you're done, you'll feel comfortable using Open Sound Meter to tune speaker systems. We won't be tuning speaker systems in this video, just setting up and going through the software. But if you want to learn how to tune speaker systems, I will leave a video in the description below that teaches you how to do that. And when you are tuning speaker systems, you want to do it quickly. And so for that, I recommend you check out my PA checkpoint chart. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. For now, let's dive in. So we want to begin by just connecting our interface up to Open Sound Meter and testing that everything works. So just grab whatever audio interface you have, anything is fine. I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett interface. Then you want to get yourself a measurement microphone if you don't have one already. I'm currently using the Sonarworks Sound Reference ID. That's just because that's what I have, although I can recommend a couple of extra microphones which I will leave a link to in the description down below. So what I've done is I've set my microphone on a microphone stand. It's connected to input one on my audio interface, my Focusrite Scarlett. My Focusrite Scarlett is connected to my laptop and my microphone is pointing at my studio monitor that I've got here, the left studio monitor. And it's about one meter away, that's roughly three feet. I've turned phantom power on on my interface and I can tap my microphone and look at the gain to make sure that I am getting input on my interface, which I am, so let's move on. So now we're going to open up Open Sound Meter. Open Sound Meter will look like this when you open it up, right? It's blank, there's one measurement, there's a generator above it, and it's set to single and magnitude. If it doesn't look like this, you go to File, and then you can just go to New, it'll say Create New Workspace, and you say Yes, and it's just going to reset that back to the way it was. The first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our microphone is going into Open Sound Meter. We might as well use this measurement, which is sitting here. If you left click on this measurement, you'll see that it opens up a bunch of options at the bottom of the screen. What we need to do is we need to make sure that on the bottom right here, when we hover over this, it says audio input device. We need to click on that and make sure that we have our audio input device selected. I said I was using a Focusrite, so that's why I have Focusrite USB audio input one and two selected here. You might select some other form of interface. It depends what drivers your interface is using. These two boxes to the left of our audio device input are the channels for our measurement, which you see up in the top right corner here. Again, we'll talk about this in detail in a moment, but basically measurement is the first channel, this first bar that you see here, and reference, which is R, is the second one there. So we want to make sure that measurement is set to one because we connected our microphone to input one on our Focusrite interface. And then we can see up the top right here that our voice is trickling the microphone input. Another way you can double check to make sure is just adjust the gain on your sound card. If you see the volume going up when you adjust the gain up, great. If it goes down when you adjust the gain down, you're definitely on the right channel. We know that our input is working as intended. Now we need to check our output and we're gonna use the generator for this. Above that measurement, you see the generator and there's a little switch to the left of it which turns the generator on and off. By left clicking on the generator, you will see a menu appear down the bottom here and we can select which output we want this generator to come out of. So again, I want the generator to come out of my left speaker in my studio monitors because that is the speaker that I pointed the microphone at. I check down here, it is Focusrite USB audio. That's as I intended it to be. And then I can select output source one or two or both one and two. One and two would mean that the sound from the generator comes out left and right in my studio, but I just want to come out of left, which I have connected to output one on my focus right. That's great. So what I do now is I'm going to mute, turn down my studio monitors, and then I'll turn my generator on. And as I turn the studio monitors up, I expect to hear the noise coming out of my left speaker. And that's exactly what happened. So I know now that my microphone that I have here is connected correctly and is showing up in Open Sound Meter. And I also know that my generator is working correctly and is sending the output out of my left speaker as I intended. This is a good point to stop and just talk about how Open Sound Meter is made up then. Because as you've seen, I've clicked on this measurement to configure everything for the measurement. I clicked on the generator to configure everything for the generator. Open Sound Meter doesn't have things hidden in the menus up at the top. 
it has what they call context-specific menu. So the bottom is always the menu, and if you want to change the settings for something, you click on it on the screen, and the settings appear down at the bottom here. So we can click on the graph to change the graph settings, we can click on the measurement to change the measurement settings, and we can click on the generator to change the generator settings. Let's dive a bit further into this measurement then. If you don't know already, the kind of measurement that happens in programs like OpenSoundMeter is what's called dual FFT analysis, or a transfer function. And what we're doing is we are comparing two sounds. When we measure a speaker system, we compare the sound before it went into the speaker, so the pink noise that the laptop generates, to the sound after it comes out of the speaker, so the pink noise the microphone picks up. I go into detail on this in another video, which I'll leave a link to down below. But safe to say, when we configure our measurement, what we want to do is we want to have channel one, the measurement channel, be the microphone, because we want to measure the sound that the microphone picks up and compare that to the reference. We want to find out how the speakers are sounding in the room. The reference, however, should just be the pink noise before it comes out of the speakers. So to do that, what we do is we click on this measurement and down the bottom you see this reference channel that I mentioned earlier. We just need to select loop. What loop does is it sends this generator straight into our measurement before it goes out of the speakers. To test that that works, we just click the generator and we should see the second meter here in our measurement fill up. And we do. Great. Let's talk about gain staging then because that's really, really important when you're taking a measurement. We want to set our generator to be about negative 12 dB. The reason that we want to do that is because that's just a nice, healthy level that just tickles the orange on the meter. If I set it to zero, you see it's all right up here in the red. Why does that matter, you might ask? It matters because we want to match our measurement, channel one, to our reference, channel two. And if the gain is basically clipping, we have no headroom. So we want a bit of headroom. How do we do that then? Our generator is running, and it's coming out of output one. So I can actually turn this up and hear it in my speakers. I'll mute it for now. What I want to do then is I want to gain my microphone up. I'm gonna set my gain nice and high and just roll it a little bit back from the maximum because I want my microphone to be really, really sensitive. I don't want to have to crank my speaker to get my microphone gain up to the same as my generator gain. The next thing I'll do is I'll unmute my monitors and I'll slowly turn up the volume until my input signal, that measurement signal, channel one, is equal to the pink noise. So you see these guys are equal now. If you're wondering why that's important, it's so that our measurement arrives at the zero line here in open sound meter. If they were skewed off, then it would show our measurement arriving minus 6 dB, minus 9 dB, whatever the difference was between them. You might have noticed something though, and that is, that our graph is not actually displaying. If you look down the bottom left, you can see little flickers of blue. The graph is trying to display, but it's not. And this is a kind of quirk of open sound meter that I'm not a big fan of. Basically, we're using this thing called coherence. Let me show you coherence. Coherence is a measure of how reliable the data is that we are collecting from the microphone. What open sound meter does is if the coherence is below a certain level, so if we can't trust the data, it doesn't even display it. And that can get you thinking that you haven't set everything up correctly, when in reality it's just that the data is being hidden. We need to go into the graph settings to turn this off. So you left click on the graph, and then you see this little, uh, this little tick here that says use coherence. We turn that off. Now we see our graph, right? If I turn my measurement back on, turn back on my speakers. you see the graph starts to look a little bit more like we might expect. But coherence is an important part of the measurement. We do want to know if we can trust the data or not. So here's my suggestion. Up the top right here, you change from single to double, and then you change the second graph to be coherence. We're gonna talk about these graphs in a minute. But by setting this graph here to impulse response, we can have the coherence turned off on this graph so we can always see our graph, but we can also know how much we can trust the data. Let's try that measurement again. So open sound meter is really not sure about the data. And that leads us on to our next point in this transfer function, which is delay compensation. There is a physical space between the microphone and the speaker. It takes time for sound to cross that physical space. 
but it doesn't take any time for our sound to loop back into the reference channel of our measurement. So what we need to do is we need to apply delay compensation. We need to tell the computer like, yeah, think about it for a minute. It's gonna take a couple of milliseconds for that to get there. So offset your measurement a little bit. Lucky for us, Open Sound Meter does this automatically for us. So if we click on our measurement, down the bottom right here, you'll see apply estimated time delay, or, or you can punch in your own delay time here. So what I'll do is I will play the sound from the speaker again, I'll wait for it to stabilize for a moment, and then I will apply the delay compensation. And just like that, you see our coherence is much, much better. So now we're just about ready to measure the speakers in the studio. I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked onto the measurement and that I see the store button here, and then I will run the measurement one more time, play the noise at the speaker, let it stabilize, and then I will store that measurement. Great. Now I can turn this off and we can look at this graph. If this has been helpful so far, I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel and I'll make more tutorials about system tuning. This seems like a pretty good time to start talking about the graphs in OpenSoundMeter. Let's go back to single and just focus on the magnitude graph. So what this graph is showing us is how the sound changed when it came out of the speaker and went into the microphone compared to when the pink noise was sent to the speaker. So before speaker and after speaker is what we're comparing. Across from left to right is the frequency spectrum, as you're used to seeing. And then from top to bottom is the increase or the decrease at that particular frequency. So we can look at this graph and say, there's a little bit of a bass boost down here. We're ending up with a bit more frequency content between 125 and 250. And generally speaking, it's rising up above four kilohertz, up to 16 kilohertz. So there's a lot more high frequency information that is reaching our sound cards, reaching the microphone. And so this gives us information that we can use to apply EQ to our system. You see these peaks and troughs though. You might think, oh, I need to address that. I need to change that. But a better idea is to make the graph more coarse. Don't look at the fine detail because the fine detail is very, very changeable. And we can do that by reducing the points per octave. So you see, if I had it at 48 points per octave, there's an enormous amount of data points here. And it's really hard. To you might go chasing after this hole here saying, what's causing that? In reality, you want to bring it down to six or 12 to give you a rough idea of what the response of the system is. This is like the EQ curve of a microphone. Does it give you extra high end? Does it give you extra low end? Why? Where? Another important thing to look at when you're measuring data is how changeable the data is. Right now you can see that this graph is moving really, really slowly, but it might not start out that way when you look at it. It might be moving really, really fast like this. And that makes that information really, really unreliable because it's changing from moment to moment. So what we want to do is we want to average that data. We want to take a longer measurement over a slightly longer amount of time, which gives us a slower change, which is easier to act upon. So down the bottom left, when we select this measurement here, we left click measurement, down the bottom left, you see I've selected FIFO, that means first in, first out. Get into that another time. And then I can turn this up until the graph stabilizes. So if I set it to 16, you see that the graph is really, really slow to react to the sound of my voice. I'll play the noise and you can see the difference. So if we want to look at different graphs, we can click up here on the top right and we can see the different ways of looking at the data. Spectrum is what you're probably used to seeing on any old mixer, right? It is the amplitude by frequency. It's showing us the frequency content at this moment in time. Magnitude is what we were looking at already. It's showing us the difference between two signals. Zero being no change, a line above zero indicating that there is more of a certain frequency, and a line below zero indicating there is less of a certain frequency. Phase. Let me turn this on and show you something. Phase is a complicated one. We know that sound is a wave, right? It pushes and pulls, right? And we measure that wave in a cycle, right? You know, one forward and one back, that is a full cycle. We can also represent a cycle in 360 degrees, right? Because after we have gone 180 degrees, we're at the furthest extension. And when we go 180 degrees back to 360, we're right back where we began. And that's how we visualize phase on this graph because all the different frequencies are moving through their cycles at different speeds. 
And that's really, really important information when you are trying to align sound systems together, specifically subwoofers and mains and that kind of thing. So you can see here, for example, that the frequency at 420 hertz was at zero degrees when it arrived at our microphone. But one kilohertz was further along. It was about 70 degrees further along in its cycle. This is probably a whole video in and of itself, but you can get this graph here. There are loads of other graphs there. The other important one that I think you need to know about is the impulse response. Impulse response shows you where the arrival time of a sound is. And we use this when we are time aligning speakers, time aligning delay speakers and front fill speakers. If I were to play sound out of both speakers at the same time, you would see two spikes on that graph, indicating that the two sound sources are arriving at different times. Let's look. And there you go, you see the second impulse response, and that indicates that the other speaker is arriving two milliseconds later than the first one. So if we wanted to time align these, we would just use that data, they'd be two milliseconds apart. One last thing I wanna talk about in these graphs is the use of a target trace, right? And that's a, just a line that you're aiming for when you're tuning a sound system. Again, more on this in another video. But basically what you need to do is just go to file, show target, or you can press control T to show and hide that target. And then you can click on the target to adjust it, right? Let me just make this singles as larger. You can click on the target and then you can adjust the sort of uh, amounts that you're aiming for, the type of how much bass you want in your system, that sort of thing. It's a little janky. What I would recommend you do is that you import a target trace into it. And you can do that by I think control I, yes, or you should be able to go to File, Import, and then you can find the target trace and import that into the system. Let me just show you that quickly. When you import a target trace, it needs to be a TXT file or ASCII file. And also when you import it, a lot of the time you might have to go to the graph and turn off use coherence because it doesn't have any coherence data. So for some reason, OpenSoundMeter decides that you shouldn't see it at all. The last thing we should talk about is how you lay this out. So up the top right here, we can choose to see one, two, or three graphs at a time. I would recommend that you have the magnitude graph, the phase graph, and the coherence graph displayed. That way you know if you can trust the data and you're getting the most important information, which is the magnitude graph. And then you can also use the phase graph to see if anything really weird is happening phase-wise. All of your recorded measurements appear on the right-hand side here and you can hide them with the ticks. You can also rename them by typing down here in the title and you can change the color to make them easier to find. Once you've practiced a little bit with this and you're feeling comfortable, you can move on to tuning actual PA systems. And you'll want to watch this video here to show you how to do that. Leave a comment down below and let me know why you're learning to use OpenSoundMeter. Until next time, goodbye.